and welcome to LA Insight Studios, where we bring insight from LA. My name is Debbie Sheridan, and I will be your host today. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we are unable to continue with our live workshops. So before you do anything else, go straight to our website, the link is below, and sign up for our mailing list. Because once all this craziness is over, we will be back in your hometown live with workshops, seminars, acting intensives, and so forth and you're not gonna to wanna to miss any of that. In the meantime, we're gonna be interviewing right here on our channel, actors, casting directors, agents, managers, photographers, and so, so many more. So we're gonna try our best to continue to give you as much insight, advice, information, and encouragement as we can from our home here in Los Angeles. All right, so let's get started. Today, I am thrilled to spend some time with an actress who you may have just seen in the role of Teresa on Fox's new hit series, Deputy. She is Toby's ex-wife on This Is Us. Soap fans, you might know her as Anita Santos from All My Children. She was Lindsay Warner in Saved by the Bell, The New Class, also a regular on Pacific Palisades and Odd Man Out plus a long list of guest starring and recurring roles on Beverly Hills 90102, The Glades, and so, 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 so much more. She is an awesome human being, and she is my friend. Welcome, <laughs> Natasha <laughs> Sigliuti. Hi. So I have a few questions, so I just want to get right to it, and I want to start right at the beginning of your career, because I think that it's really hopeful, um, helpful for hopeful actors um, to sort of understand how successful working actors got their start. Did you know that you wanted to be an actress when you were a child or is it something that just sort of happened when I mean, you I, eventually moved I to LA? Yeah, I, I feel like I remember I would write, there would always be like these little ads in like the teen magazines and it would be like to do like modeling or, and I was always interested in you know, being, like I remember as a child, I, I thought like the Full House was the coolest show ever. I was like, I want to be on that show. <laughs> I never got to be on it, but um, it, it wasn't until I was in um, eighth grade, so I would have been thirteen, when it kind of became possible because somebody, you know, there was a, a fashion show at my uh, junior high school, and this woman who was a manager came up to my parents and was like, oh, have you ever thought about putting your daughter in commercials? And I was like, tell her yes, tell her yes. <laughs> Sometimes you think about those moments that, you know, end up changing your life. And, and, you know, that really was one of them because there would be no way that, you know, my parents would have had any kind of knowledge or access to the business at that, at that point. So, and so that it would have been up to me to kind of figure out how to do that. Um, or maybe, maybe, much later in life but really from that moment because um you know i i was i was introduced to, to an agent at that time then i was able to kind of you know start auditioning and do commercials and then and then i landed a role on saved by the bell at 14 and that was basically my high school years were you yeah still going to school while you were filming that or did you have to be homeschooled I did a little bit of both. It, like most of the show was filmed throughout the summer. So it would just kind of towards the end of, of one grade and the kind of the beginning of the next. Um, we had we had school on set for that. But I, I did keep going to my high school, um, ninth and 10th grade. And then by my junior year, I was just kind of working more and more. So I ended up um, doing ho like a homeschooling program. So you did a few commercials before that. So when you went into this audition for Save by the Bell, the new class, was it just like any other audition? Did it feel like a bigger deal? You know, were you nervous about it or had you already been, or you were like a pro at that point or? What do you, do you <laughs> I remember? I would always still be sort of, I remember exactly like, I, because it was such a big deal that they were making a new Save by the Bell, like another class. Um, when we found the day that we found, so it was an audition process of, you know, first with casting and then, um, and then with the producers, but then when it came to the, to the final, um, to the final sort of network test, we were all told right then and there that we had booked it. And then like immediately were taken downstairs to this area where there were like photographers and people to introduce like this new class uh, of because the, the original series was really successful already, 
And so it, I, it, that was one of the times that that's the only time that's ever happened where they were like, yeah, you got it. <laughs> you didn't, you come with us. So, but then like right away, we were told right then and there that we booked the job and, and then we were taking, you know, pictures with the rest of the actors that had, had, um, had booked the job as well. It was crazy. <laughs> like that, that doesn't really crazy. happen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. And, and, you know, it was taped in, I remember the, the, the scariest part of all was the fact that the, you know, when we did the pilot, the first episode, it wasn't, it was already picked up to a series. So when we did the first episode uh, and it was in front of a studio audience, that was like, I remember coming out and I knew what my line, I'd been rehearsing it all week and I just, Rose, and it was just like oh, no. I opened my mouth and nothing came out, and I was just like, oh. and so they, you know, they they reset everything, and then I was like, okay, right, okay, we just got that got up, got that out of the way, oh, no. and now I have to, yeah. So it was oh, it was really a lot of fun. Like I said, it was high school, so we were still, you know, we were all young. I was a young fourteen too, and um, all the other kids were great, so we we had a lot of fun. They they yeah. did make it make it fun. You know, sometimes we would get in trouble and <laughs> get yelled at, you know, because we were still kids and behaving as such. But, um, but all in all, it was a really fun atmosphere. I, I learned to love um, sitcoms. I just, and, 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 and that rush that you get from being in, in front of a studio audience and, and learning about jokes and how they land and waiting to, you know, to pause for the applause, you know, for the laughter. Um, I definitely learned, and it was all sort of like, a learning experience it was basically yeah. like being in high school and doing acting classes as well for it was yeah it was a really yeah. good uh first big kind of experience yeah so, um so for parents of child actors like what do you like um, like if there was some advice you were going to give them like how did your parents support you as a child actor like what were they able to do for you or help you so that you could be successful and be happy and thrive in what you were doing. Like, you know, for, if there are parents of children, actors out there now or hopefuls, what can they do to encourage or support their kids? Um, but in, in, in terms of their support, they just really, they, they knew that this is what I wanted to do. It, it, I got very, very lucky very early on. And so they were just, and my father was always a huge fan of, of film and, and, and just, you know, like he would go watch the movies for 10 cents or whatever in Uruguay, the, uh, the American movies with the subtitles. So he was, he like in being, having his daughter be in front of the camera and, and working like that was, I could, you know, they were both so proud. Um, and it, and, it, and it's challenging because after, you know, I did get very lucky right away, but then, and then later you start to realize, oh, I'm not going to get every job I auditioned for. Right. <laughs> and so that's when you really need the, the support of like, you know, of understanding that you're, you know, it's not always going to go your way and that's okay. In fact, you fail more than you succeed and you just have to like get, you just have to keep on keeping on. That's really great advice for for anybody, it really, it almost in the level of their career, but especially people who are just starting out at teens and whatnot, you know, that um, not to be disappointed, right? Whenever yeah. you don't book the job or the audition doesn't go well because there's, yeah. there's going to be another one. Um, yeah, you exactly. Have to be better prepared or you have to totally. just wait for the role that's right for you. And not everything's right for you, even if you're auditioning for it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I, there's been some auditions where I'll, where I'll be like, there is no one else that's right. For, like I'm right for this. And I, and you know, those are very few and far between. I would say one or two times maybe that happened. And I was like, there is, there's just nobody that's going to bring this to life the way that I would because of what all certain circumstances um, that led up to that point in my life. And, and it's so awesome when you know, like you just know you're going to just nail it. Right. Um, it's the best feeling, but it doesn't come very often. So you're always still kind of like, when is that going to happen again? <laughs> what am I going to say? But, um, but yeah, it's, you, you can't beat yourself up. You know, as somebody famous, I think said, like, you can't get upset for a job you, you, that you didn't get a, a job that you already did. You didn't have in the first place. So it's just a matter of, you know, trying your very best, always being prepared. I think that's, that's key because it is a profession and there's always going to be somebody that, you know, is off book or not, not that you need to be off book all the time, but being prepared is so important, you know, cause so many people it's, it gets more and more competitive every year as well. Yeah. Um, as the business changes too. So. 
So how do you prepare or, you know, how much time do you spend um, getting ready for an audition? Like how, what, 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 what is your process? So it always just depends on how much time, you know, sometimes I always, I get, I, I'm always like nervous when I get the ones that are like, at, you get an appointment at five o'clock and, um, for the next morning at, you know, 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. And it's like page after page after page. And I'm like, ah! that puts me in a little bit of like freak out mode. But uh, if I if I have a couple of days, which is always nice. And of course, the business has changed o over the course of the of the years with the, the fact that you can self tape more now and you don't really go into sort of rooms and meet casting as much um, as before. Um, I work best when I do have it sort of down like memorize. I like to have things memorized because then I can have fun to just, you know, be in the character and, and be the character. Um, and I don't have to worry about, you know, learning my lines or knowing my lines or, um, right. So yeah, mostly it's like, if I have a little bit of time, I'll just, I'll, I'll attack it in the morning and then in the nighttime before bed. And, and right when I wake up and I see sort of what sticks and luckily my husband's an actor too. So <laughs> we can, we run lines with each other all the time and we're oh, always breaking it all helpful. down. Oh my gosh, it is, it is. And even, but I, I, you know, even I've had my son, I, even before that I would have, I would have torture my friends to run lines. I'm, I love to run lines too. Yeah. Like I would have friends come over and go, and I've had my son, I've had my brothers and everybody, like whoever can help me, especially when it's the, when it was the meaty, you know, the meatier auditions or, and back in the day there used to be multiple auditions in one day. So, um, yeah, I would have, I would have, get anybody that that would help me on top of sometimes if it was something that was like more um you know that i that i, I wanted help with i would i was i would study with a coach mm -hmm. um i've had a couple different ones over the course of my 27 year career however long i've been working <laughs> yeah so it's great yeah. to have uh, another actor or a coach or someone working with you be before an audition if possible um, so now whenever you uh leave an audition um, or let's say something doesn't go too well, or you don't book the job. Like, how do you um, handle that? Like on an emotional level, like, <laughs> are you able to like walk away and, and just move on to the next one? Do, does it eat you up inside? You know, like, how are you? Because that's something as actors, we have to be able to manage, you know, if you're going to yeah. have a career um, of any longevity, there's going to be lots and lots of uh, rejection. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's sort of a combination of everything because um, there is so much rejection. <laughs> like you are just told no constantly, and it's not just like no, you didn't get the job. It's sometimes you'll get you're not not this enough, not that enough, and it's very frustrating. But you 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 have to know that that's sort of part of the of the thing. Like you're not going to get every you know, audition that you go in for. And so some hurt, like some, you know, you kind of have to take that, that evening to just be like, and you wake up in the morning and like, man, like, I really, I really thought I nailed that one. And it could be, you know, it's, it's so out of your control. So to try and like, get too, too upset about it, it's, it's, it's not healthy, because there's like, so many different factors. Um, and it's, you know, you just have to work at letting it go because there, yeah. there's always something around the corner. That's what we always say. Like something will always be around the corner. You know, we go through this thing where we think, oh gosh, I'm never going to work. And I'm never going to work again. And I thought that I can't tell you how many times. <laughs> and then, you know, sure enough, something comes around the corner. So, you know, you just, you have to let go of those things it, and not take it personally. I guess that's the key thing to kind of managing all of that rejection, all of that no. Right. Um, as long as you know that you did the best job, that you were prepared, that you 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 nailed it, and you did. That's that's all you can do. That's yeah. the only thing that you can control. So that's true. And there's so many reasons that actors don't book jobs, which have absolutely nothing to do with them. It's yeah. Not, it's not, it's really you know oh, never man. personal. Yes. It's just like they had totally. the wrong hair color, or yep. you know they're they look too much like my ex-wife. You know, yeah. and I don't, you know, they remind, you know, like just yeah. crazy things that could have yeah. nothing to do with your acting ability totally. or anything personal. So, yeah, so that, that's great. A great positive, healthy, you know, outlook is that you can just say, well, you know, on to the next one. Yeah. Um, uh, so you worked as a child actor and you are working currently as a, an adult. Um, did you find it difficult to make the transition from a child actor to an adult? And when did you realize that you had made that transition? 
when I, I turned 18, I, I knew that I could work more, which was very exciting because, you know, they did, I didn't have the restrictions of being um, a minor. And, and I, my transition was sort of just kind of smooth. Like I remember I went from Saved by the Bell and then I started doing, I did like a guest star on 90210. And then I thought, man, I'm so cool now. Cause I just went from this like <laughs> teeny, teeny, teen show to this like super cool, like teen show. <laughs> and they were older at that time. And you know, and then funny enough, like even though I turned 18, then I also got some gigs um, for Pacific Palisades, I was already 18 playing younger. Like they wanted me to be younger. And I remember they cut bangs to try and make me look younger. Um, but then it was in, the, in my 20s where I was like, early 20s, I kind of struggled. And then after 25, 26, 27, then I kind of, once you're hitting in that 30 year old range, you feel like, oh, right, I'm now like a, an established adult actor. <laughs> right. And so you didn't have to like, rebrand yourself in any way like it's just something that you know you were able just to organically age and and yeah, start to just get yeah. roles as an older person absolutely yeah i was never really um typecast or anything like that um even from you know it's 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 just it's interesting what different people's opinions are about because sometimes if you do comedy at first they're like well she's a comedic actress and then then all of a sudden you book a dramatic show and they're like oh well she can't do comedy she's a dramatic actress so but I've done everything so it just depends on how that person sees you and what you're sort of coming off of um at that point but I and then I actually at, when I when I had that kind of a little bit of a struggle in terms of you know not fitting right into that category of like I was in my 20s um and I couldn't really get like my you know early early 30s or anything like that i did um um i went to new york and i did a soap opera so i was like you know i i, I talked to my my manager and my reps at the time and i was like and you know it also kind of made sense for what i wanted to do with my life and i was like i can go to new york and do a soap for a while and that's like a steady gig and then i'll you know a couple of years i'll come out of that and then i'll be able to you know get back into doing television and stuff or, or prime time um, so I, I did do that soap and then I was, I, I got married on that soap. I had a baby. And then after that, then I came, I was done with that. And I booked, um, a series, a Botchko series, which was one of my favorite things that I did called Raising the Bar. So then I really felt like, and I think I was 27 or 28 at that point. So I felt like, okay, yeah, this is, this is what I want to be doing. That was like such a gift, that show. Okay. So when you started out, you had a manager that you, that discovered you. Right. Is that, is that, and you signed with that person initially? Is yes. Um, when I was uh, very young, I, you know, when I was first starting out, I had this manager um, that really kind of helped out uh, with everything and kind of helped my parents understand what the process was because she had kids that were actors as well and um, signed with her. And then I also signed with my, um, with this agency, which was uh, at the time known for having like, you know, younger kids. Okay. And then started going out on little auditions. And then after I, you know, then after when I was starting to get kind of became an adult, then I changed, I changed representation. Okay. All, that was my, around. yeah, that's funny because that was sort of yeah. what I was going to ask is like, how did you know when, it, how do you know though? Is it because, is it simply just because you got older or did, or, or was there something else that just made you realize that it was time to move on to a different? Yeah. When, when you start at such a young age, you are sort of like a child actor. So then once you become an adult, you know, there, you know, some, some agencies, and I, I wouldn't even, I don't know how it is now, but some agencies, you know, have the capability of, of, of you being with their uh, youth department and then you transition into their, oh, right. you know, mm -hmm. adult department. Um, but that wasn't the case for me. So I ended up just finding my representation as just as an, as an adult, unless you're really like in a good place, it's yeah. good to change things up and get, get sometimes people, uh, sometimes reps can become sort of like, Oh, well, she'll work. She, you know, like for me, sometimes I felt like, Oh, give it to Natalia. She'll work. But like they lose that sort of passion. So kind of getting new reps always kind of brings oh. a new fire under, you know, under, under you and and the people that are going to be working for you right. i've had so um and the manager that i've had i have now i've had for 20 something years okay yeah so you're what you look for or if something if it's not if it's not if things aren't where you want them to be what you're looking for 
in an agent is someone or a manager is someone who's really who's working for you right who's pushing yeah. for you to get seen or to get booked you know right so if that's whenever they they kind of lose that passion for you or yeah. you know they are for their job or whatever it is and you that's whenever you kind of sense okay maybe this is time for me to move on Make and find change. someone who's yeah. more interested in pushing my career forward yeah exactly and and you know again i I've, I've been doing this for so long it's very i would imagine it'd be very rare for somebody to be with the same you know agency for right, 30 years or sense. whatever even it, i mean it does happen like i said i've had the, my manager my current manager I've, I've i mean i've known her since i was 18 so um and you know i've needed to take breaks after i i had my son and just life matters and you know then you want a, a new rep to say like all right let's let's i'm, I'm ready and that's sort of what happened you know, recently is I, I, I got new representation and I um, just wanted to get back out there because I right. took a little bit of time off and yeah. And it, and it worked because I ended up immediately booking <laughs> a series. It's just so crazy. Sometimes Which like, is a uh, deputy, right? On yes. Fox. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that experience or that audition, you know, did, were you, did you have that feeling like nobody else can play this role but me like that feeling that you get sometimes when you go into an audition did you feel like that was your role or um... yeah definitely not <laughs> also because I was like I had taken some time uh, I had taken a couple of years off and when I was ready I it, you also kind of go like oh man does anybody really care about me anymore like you know nobody's gonna want to see me or they're gonna this or that you just do all of this doubt as to why you shouldn't and and when I went in for the audition for deputy I finally just made the decision that I was like I wasn't gonna cast myself you know good or bad because sometimes you'll get things I'm like oh, I'm so not right for this that I was just gonna go whatever it was I was gonna go and just do the best job that I can do and I'm not going to, you know and there's always doubt that creeps in, in about you know um, um, you know I'm I don't like the way that I look or my hair's not right all these things that just kind of want to stop you from succeeding that you have to tell yourself no I am a, I've been doing this a long ass time I am gonna be I'm gonna just be the best actress that I can be and that the rest actually doesn't matter and that's sort of what happened when I when I went in it was raining my hair was frizzy I was just like I don't care I had a big sweater on because it was cold and I was just like I'm and I and it's funny because I you know I didn't I was so shocked that I booked it too, but because I, I wasn't super attached to it as well. So there was that element of just like, you know, I know I did a good job. And, and then <laughs> when I got the call, I was like, what? <laughs> I did? <laughs> you know, after taking some time off, you just don't think, and you were just like, there's, you know, it was, it was, and also because it was like, it was a big show, you know, with a big movie star lead and, and, and it was the perfect thing for me too, because I would be playing the second lead's wife. So I knew that I would be in just a little bit, kind of a great thing to get me back to, to, to working again and getting in that kind of mindset. So it was like the perfect thing at the perfect time, right. you know, after coming off of some, you know, tough time. So, yeah. yeah. So um, what advice do you have for, for young kids and teens or whatever, anybody just starting out? Um, that they can do to um, start to establish themselves or to better themselves or to, you know, get support from their parents um, so that they can pursue their dreams. So the first thing that I would say for young people, which is what I would even tell my, my son who's a teenager, is to be a part of their school's drama programs. I mean, that is just, it's such a great way to, you know, learn and um and then really see if you love it you know and it's something that like you want to continue with so i think with the the programs that are available in in schools are awesome i did you know i even did some um you know acting in in my in my both in my junior high and a little bit in my high school as well so that would be number one you know look for the the local the listings now with the ability to self-tape you know you might be able to find open calls or open castings um, online that you can just submit yourself for. And, you know, That's and that true. it self tapes, like it's just made it so much easier now to, to get that opportunity. And, and again, not take it personally, but just throw your hat in the ring. Like my husband and I always say, let's just throw our hat in the ring and see. Yeah. 
Well, especially now with COVID-19 and really um, our inability to hold a casting session, you know, yeah. that's not something, you know, and as a casting director, I'm still trying to navigate how I'm going to go about, you know, doing this in the future, it's really going to be a lot of self-taping. So it actually you bring up a great point because I feel like that even though uh, I'm casting a film in LA, um, because I'm not having in-person casting sessions and I'm casting via self-tapes, really anybody around the country could submit a self-tape and, you Absolutely. know, if they're willing to be a local hire, so a lot of productions aren't going to pay right for yeah you know, if it's a small, you know, for sure up in a hotel and things like that but if they can be a local hire actually it might open up a lot of opportunities for people around the country to be yeah. able to book work um it could be you know a good thing let's find the silver lining you know and what's happening yeah i know because it, it is go it is going to change uh, i think a lot i think for all of us it's going i think there's going to be I would say like 90% self tape from now oh, on. Like I don't even think going into a casting is going to be something that happens for some time. And actually it's kind of great because you, you know, I have gone into auditions, you know, to casting to be put on tape, you know, for producers um, by the casting. And I've, I've just left bummed out like, God, I didn't, I should have done this or I should have done that. When you're right. self taping, oh man, you can do it a million times until right. you feel like you got it down. So it really is like a great thing. And, and you know, it's, it, it changes that feeling of like, you could have done something a little different. You know, you can't get too obsessive over, you know, doing it a million times. Although I, <laughs> I have maybe once or twice. Um, I but love yeah, your it's... perspective. That's amazing because if you if you look at it as a positive thing and it's a way where you can just kind of perfect if there is such a thing, you know, yeah. an audition or at least get it to the point where you're, you know, happy with it. It's yeah. just um the reason I think people get frustrated with it is because there's, you know, you have to have a backdrop and you need to have good lighting and you need to have good audio and you have to have a reader. You know, there's, you know, you have to have somebody reading lines with you and things like that. So there is a little bit of, you know, work involved to make yeah. the self tapes. But if you look at it as positively as you're looking at it, you know, where it's really the best way to put your best foot forward. And if people can put their mindset, set their minds like that, then it could be good for everybody, really. Absolutely. Because a lot of times when you would even go to the casting, you just get the one shot, you know, even yeah. if you mess up, they'll, they'll be like, oh no, it's fine. And you're like, ah. <laughs> but it, you know when you can do it at home and and yeah there is some there are some things that you need to kind of figure out to kind of perfect it and there are ways to, to to sort that out there's apps and everything now too that that make filming um self-tapes easier um but you know there's simple things that 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 you can do especially because it's going to go more in that direction it might be something worth you know kind of you know investing just a little bit you know nothing crazy because again you can you can i've had i've had friends uh, uh actresses film you know just off their phone because we were like doing a film in houston and in a, in a hotel room so whatever was there you just film and you got to send it out you know if somebody wants to see something and in fact i think she booked that <laughs> that job so so yeah it just you know just it just depends but i right. think it's definitely so much better now to to be able to have that kind of control over your audition so that you are again sending you know the best thing rather than that one time in and out you know yeah i love it um well if there is it if there's any any last words that you want to share or little tips or advice to to anybody yeah. out there i would say just you know keep, keep work, work hard and and you know just keep at it it will happen it takes it does take time but you know, if it is something that's truly a passion, then, you know, don't let anybody telling you no stop you. Just, you know, and there there are ways now to do it. If you, you know, there's um, so many options available now with technology. So, you know, nothing's stopping you. <laughs> thank you so much. I love you, oh, Thank this you. Awesome. Love you so much, I Debbie. so much appreciate your time. And um, oh. I look forward to doing it live and in person. I know. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. I know. All right. Hopefully soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Bye. Bye.